Chapter 11 A Performing Splacknuck The nine-year-old daughter in the family stood forty feet tall, which was considered short for her age. She was a very responsible child who was to become my best friend and protector. Glumdalklich, or Little Nurse, which I named her, had many talents which would benefit me all the time I spent in this land. Without her care and affection, I doubt that I would have survived. My little nurse named me Grildrig, a name that meant dwarf or pixie. She fixed up her doll's cradle for her little pixie to sleep in and hung it from a shelf so the rats couldn't get to me. She was skillful at sewing clothes for her dolls and soon began making shirts for me. She also took on the role of my teacher. Through her efforts, I quickly began to understand and speak the language of this land, which I learned was called Brogdingnang. She also told me what people were saying about me. Everyone calls you a tame and gentle little creature who obeys all the commands of our people when they ask you to do something. I explained to her. Your father is my master, so I must please him. Why, just this morning a neighboring farmer, an old man, came by, and your father put me on display on the table. He told me to draw my sword, then sheath it. I did just that, then bowed and asked the man how he was feeling. In the language you taught me, the man put on his glasses to see me better, and I leaned very close to me. His eyes looked like two moons shining into a bedroom window, and I began to laugh. This angered the old man, especially when your father began to laugh, too. I know that man. He's not very pleasant, and is said to be a stingy miser as well. Well, he then went to the other side of the room with your father, and they spoke in whispers, pointing to me several times during their conversation. The next day, Glumdalklich learned that the secret conversation was all about, and she came to me in tears, holding me against her chest as she spoke. Oh, my little Quildrig, today is market day in the neighboring town, and my father is planning to put you on display and charge people for having a look at you. I think it's terrible. Some of these rude people could break one of your arms or legs or even squeeze you to death. Besides, you're such a modest person. I can't bear to think what an insult this is. Thank you for your concern, my dear nurse. But I'm a stranger in your country and really must behave with all politeness. And your father is my master. That day, the farmer put me in a box with air holes and a door cut into it. Glumdalklich made sure she put her doll's quilt on the bottom of the box to give me something soft to lie on before she took her place on a cushion behind my box on the horse. Still, I was very badly shaken during the half-hour ride to town. Since the horse covered forty feet with each step, I felt as if I were on a ship, rising and falling in a violent storm at sea. We arrived at an inn, where the farmer hired a crier and told him, Announce to the townspeople that I am displaying a strange creature that resembles a splacknook. However, my animal has a body like a human's and can speak real words and do hundreds of entertaining tricks. The farmer set me down on a table in the inn's largest room. My little nurse sat on a low stool close by to take care of me and explain what I was to do. The farmer was allowing only thirty people to enter the room at a time to view me. Glumdoklich had me walk around the table, answer questions she asked, speak words of welcome to the visitors, drink toasts to their health from a thimble filled with wine, and draw my sword to demonstrate fencing as it was done in England. I repeated this over and over twelve times that day, for eight hours without a stop, until I was half dead with weariness and anger. People were close to breaking down the doors to get in as they heard the wonderful performance from earlier visitors. No one was allowed to touch me. Orders the farmer gave simply to keep me unharmed and earning money rather than protect me. But a mischievous boy managed to throw a nut at my head. Since nuts in this land are the size of large pumpkins, my head could have been split open if his aim had been good. However, I did get the satisfaction of seeing him beaten and thrown out of the room. The farmer showed me off again the following market day, as well as for visitors at his home. He was becoming so greedy that even at his farmhouse he charged visitors to see me. He forced them to pay what he would usually earn from a room full of thirty people, even if there were only five or six. This went on day after day for two months, at home or in town on market day. The only time I had to rest was Wednesday, which was the Brobdingnag Sabbath. Sabbath. Seeing how valuable I was, the farmer then decided to travel throughout the kingdom to show me off. Our first destination was the capital city, about 3,000 miles from his house. Glumdalklich rode behind her father on his horse, carrying me tied around her waist in a special traveling box she had built for me. 
She placed her doll's bed in it for me and lined the box with the silkiest and softest cloth she could find. For two weeks, we traveled through 20 large towns and many more small villages, stopping anywhere, even at private homes where people would pay well to see the Splachnik perform. Along the way, my little nurse often complained of aches and pains so her father would stop to rest, but she was actually making up excuses to stop and let me out of my box to get some air or exercise, or simply to see the view. On October 26th, we arrived in the capital city, Lorbelgrud. The farmer rented a room at the, an inn on the main street, near the royal palace, then had announcements about my performance printed and distributed. I was shown ten times a day on a huge 60-foot table to captivated audiences. By now, I was able to speak their language quite well and understood everything that was said to me. My little nurse was even teaching me to read, which was how we spent many hours on our long journeys. This demanding schedule of ten performances a day began to affect my health, but the more money the farmer was making, the more he wanted, and the more I performed, the weaker and thinner I became. Seeing that I was beginning to look like a skeleton, the farmer decided that he'd better get the most out use out of me before I died, and his source of easy money came to an end.